Welcome back to Cassandra. Hope you can hear me now. Okay, well, if everybody's sitting comfortably, then we shall begin. So this class is presented in voice and in text, and there's some visual aids I'll put on the text board at the front here. And on the floor near me, on my left, is the Firestorm class notes and first aid kit box, which has all of the class notes for all of our classes, as well as a few other goodies that are in there. And the class notes do get updated semi-regularly, so you may want to grab a fresh copy. These were last update on May the 11th for our 4.6.5 release. And if you're having trouble reading the text from this note card reader, you can open Preferences, Colour tab, and change the colour for Objects to something a bit more legible for you. And to just voice volumes, you can go to the Com menu and click on Nearby Voice to open the Nearby Voice panel. And from there, you can adjust individual volumes by slider. And if you've got questions about the topic we're on, please put them in the nearby chat. Uh, text is best only during the class, and I'll answer it as soon as I can. And please wait until after the class to ask off-topic questions, and I'm usually around for half an hour or more after the class to, ask, to answer questions. Before we get started, I'd like everybody to look at the Help menu. So we like to point out that all menus and sub-menus will detach and stay open if you click on those double lines at the top of the menu. And this makes it much simpler to check or uncheck options, as well as to remember and uncheck anything you happen to click on either by mistake or just to see what it does. And there are a couple of things that we like to mention in the help menu. And the first of these is the Firestorm wiki link, which most people can access simply by pressing F1 on your keyboard. And on some Macs and laptops, you might need to use the FN or function F1 key combination. And we have a lot of documentation there, and a troubleshooting section that has suggestions for most of the problems that people experience. And secondly, we have About Firestorm. This opens the About Firestorm window, which shows you system info, as well as credits and licensing information. The team members, and only official team members, have the ability to ping you for your viewer for that system info in an IM. So only a team member that your viewer recognises can trigger this request. Uh, when you first log into Firestorm, there's a little uh, file gets downloaded from our server that contains the names of everybody who's on the support team and the devs as well. Uh, and uh, that will be reflected in world. And if you do get that request, please just choose yes, as the information may help us to help you solve your problems. So, welcome to the basic troubleshooting class. We're going to cover some of the basic methods and resources available to help you start to figure out where your problems might originate. Now, this class is based on Firestorm, but it can apply to all viewers. So, we're going to start with a really handy trick that should help you if you find your settings are corrupted or unexpectedly reset. So, we've all been there, right? The viewer crashes and now all your settings are gone. Or you have some problem and clearing your settings is the next step of troubleshooting. Well, most people hate having to redo all their settings, especially if they still have the problem. So, what if you had a backup copy of your settings? Then you could just clear out the corrupted files and then just restore them from your backup. So you may never need a backup of your settings, but the one time you do, it would be really nice if you had them. So in short, backing up your settings is simply making a copy of your known good settings. And this means diving into the file system, but it's not as bad as you might think. And you do need to make sure that you have a good set. Backing up something that doesn't work really doesn't help. So you'll find detailed steps on backing up your settings on our wiki at that link. But do keep in mind that your backup settings cannot be used when upgrading your viewer. We always recommend clearing settings when upgrading. The chances are very good that your old settings will cause you problems. And when switching from one viewer to another, the settings for one viewer may cause problems if used in any other viewer. And if your known good settings actually aren't good, in which case you'll need to delete them and start from a blank slate. And if you want to talk about this backup process, 
stick around after the class and I'll be happy to walk you through it. So let's have a look at basic troubleshooting then. So we all have the occasional problem with our viewer and need to get them fixed so we can get back to using our viewer and not fussing around with it. And this usually requires some amount of troubleshooting. Now troubleshooting isn't always simple. In fact, most times it's a slow process as you eliminate one possibility after another until you find the root of the problem. Well sure, you could contact one of us in the forest and support groups for help, but then you have to deal with chat lag in there. Plus, we'll start by asking you to do most of this stuff anyway. So here are a number of things that you can do to start working on the problem on your own. And if nothing else, you can determine what the problem is and not. First steps, document your work. If you make a change, especially if you're troubleshooting or just tinkering, write down what changes you've made. And this is important if you're making a change to debug settings. If you don't remember what you changed, how can you change it back? And by clearing your settings. So save yourself some headache and jot down the changes you made so you can put them back if you need to. Relog, reboot, reset. The first thing to try in almost every case is a relog. It can clear most every temporary glitch, and most glitches are temporary. And if the problem is related to your location, teleport to a different one. And we have some space at Hipple Hollow you can use when you need a reliable location. And there's a link to it there. Or you can find an empty water sim. Let's open up the world map, and that's the bottom bar icon, or control M, or world menu, world map. Type in Moses, Sulu, or another of your choice, and click find, or just press enter, and then click teleport. And even simpler, if you have the navigation bar enabled, type in the region name, and you will teleport there right away. And after you've teleported, wait a minute or three. Give the systems time to complete the teleport and settle into the new sim. If after, say, three minutes, the problem persists, then relog there. If relogging into the same viewer doesn't help, logging into a different one can help narrow down the source of the issue. If the issue persists on the other viewer, then it's unlikely that either one is the cause. But take note, though, even if the issue does not persist in the other viewer, the cause might still lie elsewhere. And if you still have the problem at this point, reboot the entire computer and try again. Some temporary glitches are held there too. And if that didn't help, another thing that sometimes needs a reset is your router or modem. This is especially true when your packet loss is high, and I'll speak more about that later. So when you reset your router or modem, Remove the power completely, unplug it, and leave it unplugged for several minutes. And if it has a battery backup, remove the battery. I know it seems like a long time to some of us, but it's necessary so that your internet service provider will reset their side of your connection. So, unplug it, then get up, go grab yourself a drink, or play fetch with your heffalum, or grab the mail, or read the funnies and then come back to your router or modem and turn it back on. And you may as well reboot the PC too while you're at it. So, relog, reboot, reset. Let this be your mantra. Any questions so far? Okay. Cash. To clear or not to clear? That is the question. So I'm sure you've all heard someone mention four seemingly magical words to you when you've had a problem. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Clear, cash and relog. I think that one time or another we've all said it. Well, I'm going to give you four new magic words about advice. Don't clear your cash. Or, to be more accurate, be picky about why and when you clear your cache. The clearing cache doesn't fix everything. In fact, 
it doesn't fix nearly as many problems as you might think. And doing it when it's unnecessary has its drawbacks, including slower initial res times and excess, and excess bandwidth being pulled, which contributes to sim lag. So in a nutshell, clear your cache is something we'll recommend only if the problem appears to be texture or event related. A full cache is almost always better than an empty one. And if you're comfortable working in your file system, you can clear just those parts of the cache you need to clear. The inventory cache for inventory problems and the texture cache for texture problems. And you can find your cache folder by going to preferences and then the network and cache tab. And you can click the open button alongside the path to your cache files location. And then you'll, then you, excuse me, and in there you'll see some files ending with .inv.gz. And these are your inventory cache files. And you'll see the texture cache folder there as well. So those are the do's of cache clearing. And here are some don'ts. Don't clear your cache as a matter of routine maintenance. If there isn't something actually wrong with your cache, then this does nothing beneficial at all. What it does is tax the sim while all your textures and inventory are refetched from the server. And don't clear it for problems unrelated to the cache. And it won't help for teleport problems, upload problems, movement or communication problems, uh, most kinds of lag, most kinds of crashes, or the vast majority of bake fails. So what problems does clearing your cache solve? Well, it can help solve inventory problems and it can help solve texture problems. And there are some exceptions. For example, crashes related to textures. But in many cases, other causes are more likely and clearing cache doesn't have to be your first measure. So let's discuss how to find out how how to find out more information about particular issues you might be having. So things to look for. So here we're going to talk about how to use certain tools that can inform you of what's going on in your viewer and on your computer. And we'll look at the viewer first. So cumulative packet loss shows a percentage of data that's lost or failing to be delivered. It's in the help menu about Firestorm on the bottom line of the first section. It will look like something like packets loss 760 over 302154, or in this case 0.3%. So data is constantly being sent from the viewer to the server and vice versa. And this data is sent in chunks called packets. And each packet is checked to make sure it's complete and correct. And if it isn't, a replacement is requested. And resending data adds to overall network delays. And high packet loss is a very good indicator that you're having network issues. So what is high packet loss, I hear you say? Well, in an ideal world, one packet loss is too much. But in reality, we like to see numbers under 1% if you've been online for a long time, and under 5% if you've just very recently logged in. So resetting your router, wiring up if you're wireless, or lowering your bandwidth setting can all help reduce your packet loss. The statistics bar, the control shift one shortcut, is another good troubleshooting tool and has tons of information about your in-world environment. The only trick is knowing what to look for, and let's look at a few. So in the basic section, right at the top we have FPS, or frames per second. Now the higher the number here, the better, although most people will not notice any real difference over 30. And a movie at your theatre is 24 frames per second, and your TV, depending on where you are in the world, is either 25 or 30. And rendering quality is the primary influence on FPS, and lower settings will almost always correspond to higher performance speed. In other words, the prettier you make Second Life look, the lower your frames per second are going to be. 
packet loss is next. This shows the real time packet loss. The lower is better and infrequent spikes might be expected. And if it stays high for a long period of time, you'll be experiencing lower performance. And for some things, looking at real time packet loss will be useful, like watching for lag when you do something or go somewhere. And for checking your overall network performance, the cumulative packet loss is more useful. Next we have ping sim. And the lower the number here, the better. And this is the time it takes for the information to travel between you and the server. So note, your real life location can make a difference here. But your overall network quality anywhere along the line from your computer to the second left server can cause high ping times. What is a high ping time? Well, typically over 250 milliseconds is outside the good range. And 400 milliseconds is starting to get too high. And keep in mind, 250 milliseconds is a quarter of a second. That's several lifetimes to a packet of data. And here's a tip. If you're experiencing wildly high ping times, ask others nearby if they are as well. And if no one is nearby, ask a friend or ask folks from the group to come by. And if you all see high ping times, it's a server issue. Let's look in the simulator section of the statistics now. Time dilation. So this is the ratio of the simulator script time compared to real time. But simply put, it's how much script execution could be done in a single frame of time. And a reading of one means all scripts in the queue do everything they need to do in that one frame. A reading of 0.5 meaning it takes two frames to do the same script work. Sim FPS. This is the simulator frame rate. Uh, this should now always be the same as the physics frame rate, and it should be 45 when things are running well. And the physics FPS, and the frame rate at which the physics engine is running. And it should normally be at or near 45. Pending downloads. This is the number of downloads from the asset server to the simulator that are pending. And if this is greater than one, you may see delays in viewing note cards or scripts and in resing objects. Pending uploads. This is the number of uploads from the simulator to the asset server that are pending. And if this is greater than zero, then there may be performance issues when attempting to teleport. And let's look in the time section now. Spare time. If this is sitting at zero, then the sim is either at or past the limit of what it can actually handle. And more information about the statistics bar is available on the second life wiki. Where to look on your computer now? So the Windows Task Manager, the Mac Activity Monitor, or Linux System Monitor, among others, can show you what processes are active on your computer, as well as how much memory is being used. And there are applications available that help you, trouble, help you with troubleshooting as well, but you will need varying degrees of technical knowledge to use them. I'm going to mention some free Windows programs, and there are equivalent programs for Mac and Linux. So NetLimiter can be used to monitor your computer's bandwidth and what's using it. Uh, LogViewer Pro can show you viewer logs in a more readable format. But it doesn't interpret the logs for you, it just makes them more pretty. And Wireshark can help you diagnose network issues at a painfully detailed level. And these are just examples. And there are lots of different tools available out there. Uh, Google is your friend in this case. Another good thing to keep in mind about hard to diagnose problems is even if the viewer is the only thing being troublesome, that doesn't mean it's the source of the trouble. For instance, we've had several users with issues whom we couldn't help despite our best efforts. And each of these folks ended up completely reformatting their hard drives 
and starting off with a fresh install of their operating system. And after that, most of them found that the viewer ran just fine. Coincidence? Well, consider the fact that most people with infected PCs don't know they're infected, and an infected PC will have issues. And it's estimated that 32% of the computers with antivirus protection are infected. And there's a link there to look at. And it's old data, but it's not necessarily invalid. So let's talk about antiviruses and firewalls now. So even though they do good work, antiviruses and firewalls can end up being responsible for certain issues, most commonly concerning voice, media and search. So we've had many reports of issues like SL plugin being flagged as suspicious and or being misidentified as a virus. And antiviruses may quarantine or even just delete the files. And firewalls have been known to block SL voice from running. And in both cases, you can manually add the affected files as exceptions. And how to do that depends on the particular antivirus and firewall you're using. And if you're not sure how to go about this, check your program's documentation. Search engines are your friends. And it's also worth mentioning that your antivirus may not only stop some things from working, but can also affect your performance. So one of our users discovered that his antivirus program was scanning DLL program events as they occurred, which severely affected his frame rate. So by adding the Firestorm, SL plugin and SL voice executables to his antivirus's exclusion list for that scan, his frame rate returned to normal. But fortunately, this person knew enough to be able to figure out the source of the problem, and he was brave enough to figure, fiddle with settings. And this takes some doing to dig in deep, but don't be afraid to fumble about, just remember to document your work. Is it just me? So how do you know whether the problems you're having are your viewer, or your network, or the servers? Well, we've touched on some tools and tips for checking the viewer and the network. Now, let's look at some ways to check the servers. The Second Life Grid Status So, it often helps to check the Second Life Grid status page to see if what's happening to you is affecting the rest of the grid. And you can go to the Help menu, Check Grid Status, or open up that link there in your web browser. So, of course, you might have noticed the issue well before the status page is updated, so it doesn't hurt to check back. Tracking known issues. So, if an issue has affected a number of people, then chances are it's either been documented on our wiki, on our Jira, or on Linden Labs Jira. And this can be true regardless of the source of the problem. So, troubleshooting should include searching for previous reports. The wiki. So, you've heard we have a wiki, right? So, the Firestorm wiki is updated constantly and provides loads of documentation on issues and their fixes or workarounds as they arise. And on Firestorm, the F1 key is your friend on most keyboards and it will take you straight to the main wiki page. And some laps in Macs may require the function key also. And here are some important wiki links. There's our main wiki page. There's a troubleshooting page. And you can use these links if you want to browse the list of available pages. And this is useful if you have a problem but you aren't sure what it's called. And in the top of every page is a search bar. You can use this to find pages based off clues or symptoms. And details matter here. Type in cloud and you might find lots of help about wind light, but type in roof and you would see pages about big failure, which includes looking like a cloud. So the more time you spend poking around, the more familiar you'll become with it. So browse it when you don't need it. Skip a page or two a day, and in no time you'll be able to find what you're looking for. And here's a secret. Even if you don't absorb all the info when you first read it, and quite frankly, who does? 
it might ring a bell if you have a problem. You will say, hmm, that sounds familiar. I think that was on the wiki. And you'll have a better sense of where to find it. As for when you do have a problem that you search on the wiki for help, when you find the relevant pages, there might be several suggested solutions. Now be sure to read each one carefully. Sometimes there might be small differences in what is recommended compared to what you've already tried, and these small differences can mean a lot. For instance, did you know there's a big difference between replace and wear when you're trying to de root yourself, or between a crashed desktop and a forced logout? Well, it's on the wiki. The Jira. So both Linden Lab and Firestorm use a web-based issue tracker called the Jira for reporting and working on bugs and other matters. An LL calls theirs a bug tracker because they try to keep support issues in a different system. So the Jira can seem intimidating and hard to navigate if you're not accustomed to it, especially with Linden Labs because of its size. It's freaking ginormous. But if you take a deep breath and just dive in, you may find a wealth of helpful info. And there's a link to our first on Jira. And there's a link to the Linden Lab Jira. So, like the wiki, but even more so, spending time looking around can go a long way in helping you get used to it. And when you're used to it, you can more easily find things. And also like the wiki, there's a search field at the top right. Put in your search terms there and all of the Jira issues mentioned in those terms will be listed. And you can also get more search options by going to the issues menu, search for the issues. And when your search results come up, they're sorted by relevance, or at least what the program thinks is relevance. Clicking on the column headers like key, created or updated helps you find the most recent issues. And in each issue, or ticket if you will, look for helpful information in the summary, which is the title of the issue, the description, which is a basic rundown of the issue, and in some cases it might include steps to reproduce the problem. And in the comments, which may include responses from team members and or other people with the same issue, and solutions or workarounds may be provided here, and your own if you have a solution or more information about the problem. So note that support Jira's can only be viewed by the person creating it and the Firestorm team members. And this is necessary to protect our users' privacy. And also note, if you never access the Jira and want to comment on an issue or create one, you'll need an account. Please use your second life name here, not your real life name. We can't your real life information. And we have a class on using our Jira called Reporting Bugs Requesting Features. So the wiki and the Jira. So we even have a wiki page that can help you find currently relevant Jiras. And there's a link to it there. This page is updated regularly with lists of currently common issues and direct links to their genus. Well, that's it. I hope this wasn't too painful, and hopefully you now feel better equipped to tackle issues that come up, or at least to get more information so that you can quickly return to enjoying your second life. Are there any questions, anybody? Okay, well, I'm just going to throw this out here. I'd like to thank you personally for taking the time to come out this morning to the class, and on behalf of the entire Firestorm team for using our video. It's you, the users, of the reason Firestorm is as popular and awesome as it is. Thank you.
and uh, we have open Q&A now, so uh, feel free to ask any questions you might have that are unrelated to class material. Uh, voice is welcome now if you wish to use voice. Uh, we're always planning new releases. Uh, I'm going to give you my standard reply to this. Uh, a new fear will be out when it's ready. So we're, we're trying to get them down to about mm, between three and four months releases. But it's, uh, you know, if we put out viewers quickly, then we don't have we don't have enough time to test, get bug fixes in, and it's like mm -hmm. nobody wants to be. People hate updating, you know. Who wants to do a clean install, you know? People hate updating, so uh, you know, if we were to put out a viewer every two months, then we wouldn't have much time to actually test the any new bug fixes. Our QA system. It's our QA system that really is the deciding factor on uh, when we release. Uh, I'm not really sure about any cool new features. I think this release is a bug. is mainly a bug fix release. The release after this one will be one with new features. We tend to try and do it to turn around. Bug fix is one release, and then new features the next. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that the contacts list has been worked on at the moment, Cassandra. Uh, the developer that was working on that system uh, is no longer with us. And uh, other developers are working on bug fixing rather than uh, new shinies at the moment. But yeah, I, I, I do miss the, the colours in the contacts list myself. It's a, it was a handy feature. You could see at a glance who was in WhatsApp. I'm waiting to see what uh, North Spring's comments are actually here. Don't leave me hanging here. Oh, I never thought about the cache folder. Yeah, obviously you really, really don't want your antivirus scanning your uh, your cache folder. That would be nasty. Uh, I can't begin to imagine how that's going to slow how much that's going to slow down your viewer if it scans every texture that you upper download. Yeah, yeah, that's that's an important point that uh, North makes there. Uh, the people that think I cleared my cache in the relog and it fixed everything. Yeah, well, it was probably just the relog that fixed things. This is why we say always try a relog first thing. It fixes most issues. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm very much in the same uh, way, Cassandra. Uh, I have to set aside a whole day to scan my uh, hard drive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But at least you know it's thorough and it's got into everything. Oh, 
I, I tend to be a bit more, uh, yeah, I, I tend to not want to use my computer and just let the uh, scan go on with things. I have to say, in all the years that I've owned the Mac, and I've had antivirus protected for most of that time, that uh, it's never ever flagged up anything. There was one time when I got a texture in my cache folder flagged up as being suspicious of some kind. I took it to be a false positive. But for any Mac users out there, don't be complacent and think that uh, because you have a Mac they're immune to viruses, they're not. In fact, uh, historically the very first computer virus was written on a Mac to infect other Macs. Uh, Apple have perpetuated the myth that they're immune from uh, infection.